Hello and welcome to Build a CubeSat. In 2020 I set out to learn everything I could about building and launching a small satellite that could actually do something useful in space. Without any training in engineering or any other STEM field, that's a bit of a tall order. Now, almost four years later, I'm of course nowhere near done, but I feel like I'm at a point where I can start documenting this project in a way that may be useful to others. To you, that is. This is why I'm starting this channel and I'm also uploading everything I'm working on to a repo as public domain. So in the past few years I've done some high altitude balloon flights in order to learn the fundamentals of CAD, electronics and programming. These payloads were little more than Raspberry Pis in some slightly over-engineered boxes, but I did learn a lot and I managed to get back some nice pictures from the stratosphere. What I would like to do in the next years is to transition to working on actual CubeSat hardware while still using the balloon flights as a test environment. I don't know if this even needs saying, but obviously I'm not an expert in any of this. As a matter of fact, I don't really know what I'm doing most of the time, but I learn as I go and I share with you what I find out. So please don't take these videos as tutorials, but more like a jumping off point for doing your own research. So with this out of the way, let's get started. I'm sure most of you know what a CubeSat is. It's basically a small satellite consisting of one or more units, a unit being a cube of 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters. So a 3U CubeSat, for example, would be 30 by 10 by 10 centimeters. Obviously, if you want to build and launch a CubeSat, there's a lot more to consider than the, just the satellite itself. So I went ahead and wrote down all the elements of a CubeSat mission I could think of at the moment which is also pretty much the outline of what I want to do on this channel. I'm sure this is not complete and all and will change a lot over the years, but let's have a look at it. So broadly speaking and just as an overview, I'm breaking this project down into the CubeSat itself, the ground segment, everything uh, related to the launch with uh, like integration and testing, legal aspects like the legal framework we're operating in and uh, licensing and that kind of stuff, business aspects like um, budgeting and financing. And the last one is kind of a catch-all um, category because there, there are things that I would like to talk to related to the project that just didn't fit in some uh, anywhere else. So if we look at the CubeSat, um, this may be a good moment to mention my time frame for this project. Um, I think I would like to be ready to launch this, this CubeSat in about 10 years. So this looks like a lot because it is a lot and um, I'm very aware of this. And again, I'm not an engineer and I will have to learn basically all of this. So what we are going to be looking at in a video soon is the, the CubeSat standard. That's kind of a very fundamental document for everything I would like to do in, in this project. So that's coming up soon. And other than that, I just listed the various um, aspects or subsystems of a CubeSat, like the structure, the hardware, which is everything uh, electronic, um, the firmware, which is what is running on the bus. So the bus being the part of the CubeSat that allows the payload to work in space. So it's the, uh, the, the electronic power system, the radio, the GNC, which is guidance, navigation and control. Yeah, everything that allows the payload, enables the payload to work. Um, I'm calling it firmware because I will not need to, I hope I will not need to change this once the, the, the satellite is in orbit. And in contrast to the software that is running on the payload, which I would like to be able to change even when the satellite is in orbit. Um, if we look at the ground system, I think that's going to be a somewhat more simple task to build because it's mainly just a tracking dish that, uh, that's connected to a software-defined radio um, in order to uh, downlink telemetry from the satellite and uh, uplink commands to the satellite. Um, launch is kind of a, still a kind of a black box that will need a lot of research. Um, here in this area I would like to talk about um, how I go about 
researching rideshare providers and how I will pick one of those and then what kind of testing um, will I need to, to either do myself in a preliminary fashion but of course I will need to find a testing provider. Often I think testing and integration is um, it's kind of a combined service that is being offered. Um, yeah, but this is just a thing, the whole launch is going to need a lot of research. Um, legal matters should be kind of not too difficult because the international legal framework is kind of clear and well defined in, in this, not, not in every aspect of um, working in space, but in building and launching a CubeSat, it's kind of, it's not too difficult, I think. Uh, one important thing will be licensing for um, everything concerning radio operation, RF operation, and also um, Earth observation. I mean, if we have any kind of camera on the CubeSat, this will need um, to be licensed. Um, this is also very different for in, in different countries. So I'm located in Switzerland um, and uh, it's, I think it's going to be a vastly different process in, in the USA or in other places. But yeah, that's something that I will have to look into. So the business aspects are mainly, um, I'm not, I'm neither am I a business expert. But uh, I'd just like to share with you how I go about budgeting the thing, which of course is in a very preliminary fa um, fashion, because um, that's also another thing worth mentioning. I am betting on a few changes and technologies being available in, in, um, in 10 years time that are not right now. Um, a huge assumption I'm making is the availability of DTC technology, direct to cell technology, you know, where you can receive data on your smartphone from a satellite that's being tested right now by various companies. So this would enable me to uh, downlink um, images and maybe even video um, from low earth orbit without having to um, build or buy a high bandwidth uh, downlink solution, which I would not be able to um, afford or build myself anyway. So that's kind of a huge um, pivotal thing I'm betting on that, you know, may come back to bite me because uh, the whole project hinges on it. Actually, um, it might be a good moment to start a list with uh, things that may come back to bite me. Um, and. Uh, DTC technology availability is that's definitely um, a big one. The other one talking about budgeting and financing is uh, launch cost. Right now, I think launch cost is a huge part of the overall cost of a CubeSat project. But I think within the next 10 years, this is coming to this is going to come down rapidly. Um, again, that's kind of an assumption I'm making right now and that the whole project is kind of hinging on. So yeah, that also, I think that also goes on the list. It's sensible to have this kind of list of <laughs> things that uh, may come back to bite me. Um, launch becoming much more affordable. Again, um, I'm going to go into all of this in excruciating detail <laughs> in future videos. But for now, I just wanted to give you a kind of a quick overview about how, um, how uh, I envision going about this project. So that's the road ahead so far. In the next episode, I would like to talk about the preliminary specs I have in mind for my CubeSat. If you want to, you can check out the current version of this document uh, in the repo. The link is in the description. About the upload frequency for these videos, I'm not sure yet. Uh, this is my first YouTube channel and I'm still figuring things out. I was thinking monthly, but as these are kind of simple to make and don't need a lot of editing, it might be more frequent or less frequent for more complex stuff. We'll see. There is also a content plan up on the repo if you want to check out what's coming up next.
So thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know if you liked this episode and I will see you in the next one.